Hello everyone and welcome and today we're going to use expressions and ANSYS CFX to develop a transient inlet boundary condition. The case we're going to consider today is going to be a two-dimensional house subjected to that transient wind at the inlet. From here we're going to monitor the forces on the building and then visualise at the end. So the first thing to do is take fluid flow CFX, hold the left mouse button down and drag it over, right click on geometry, Open new design modeler. If you snap onto this y axis here, what you should see is the zx plane is here. And what we're looking to do is create a computational domain approximately there. So, what I'm going to do is first of all Select the plane and then select the new sketch option. Select rectangle and then just hover over the origin until you see a P. That's highlighted there. And just pull this right out. In reality, I'm not that concerned about how big the domain is. I just want it big enough so that when the flow comes over the house, it's not influenced by the roof. So that should be suitable for me. So just selecting extrude and making sure sketch one is visible there. Just going to extrude that by 0.5 meters. Again because we're considering a two-dimensional case that dimension is somewhat irrelevant. Just hitting generate and what you'll see is that's now a fluid body as you can see here. I'm now going to add another sketch which is going to be our house sketch. So selecting that second sketch, going to sketching, and then zooming in on this region here. I'm just going to place my house there. So I want that to be two horizontal lines, where the first section is coincident about that axis. And there's that. And then just adding dimensions. Selecting the first and the second. Just selecting five of both of those. The next thing to do is add a pitched roof. So back to draw, line, hover, CD, hover until you get that P, and then drawing the second. And the final thing to do is just point to point here. And now if we go back to modeling, select sketch 2, select extrude, and rather than adding material, we want to cut material. Same distance as before, so just click generate. And now we've got our house. It looks a little wonky, but it's only really for demonstration. So when you're happy you've done that, just close this and open up meshing. So the first thing to do is select mesh and have a general size for the cells in the computational domain. So I'm going to select those to be 0.5 meters. I'm going to rotate my house around. So what I'm going to do is size the surfaces of the house by right clicking on mesh. Insert the sizing. I'm going to choose our geometry. In this instance, faces are selected, which is perfect. And I'm just going to use this box zoom tool to only select those one, two, three, four sides. Just click apply, and I'm going to make those 0 0.25 meters. We're also going to want to have prism layer cells going across here, so we properly capture the flow. So if we select mesh, insert an inflation. First we want to select the fluid body and then we want to select the boundaries. So we can do this manually selecting that floor, that wall and all the others. Do 
just holding your middle mouse button down to perform the rotation and making sure you hold down control so these faces don't unhighlight. And in terms of my inflation option, I like to have a lot of control about how big it is at the end. So I'm going to put total thickness as 0.1 meters. Once you're happy you've got that correctly set up, just click generate. So if you can go mesh by clicking on the Y axis and then scrolling to fit the mesh to screen. So if we just zoom in, you can see that there's good level of meshing here. Could actually be too fine for what we want, but I'll just leave it alone for the moment. Again, in reality, you'd probably want more refinement in the wake here, but this is just our demonstration case. So when you're done, just select update, shut the meshing down, and then open up CFX Pre. So what we're going to do now is we're going to change the analysis type to be transient and I'm going to leave this on for a total of 20 seconds and have time steps as low as 0.01 so we should get a decent time resolution we'll also see the flow develop as the simulation progresses so we want to start by selecting boundary conditions I'm just going to rotate, we'll have a look at this inlet face here and I'm going to select the boundary tool here create a new boundary and call him inlet clicking in location, making sure select is selected and that's highlighted that boundary condition there I'm going to give this a default value of 4 meters per second this will be changing in a moment when we set up our expression. I'm going to create new boundary conditions. So right clicking on default domain, insert and boundary. I'm going to call this walls. This is going to be surfaces I'm not particularly interested in. So this will be this side face here, this top over here, and the back face. So I'm not particularly interested in the air influence on the flow because the roof is far away from the building and the side walls they are not playing a particular role because it's a two-dimensional case. If we change no slit wall here to be free slit wall this means there's going to be no frictional effects on those walls. So just clicking apply. If we select another boundary condition insert boundary we're going to have outlet this is where the flow is going to leave I'm actually going to change that to be an opening and then select here and just setting that to zero pressure so the difference between an outlet and an opening is an opening will allow flow to recirculate and come back into the domain it's not essential for all cases but where you have strong recirculation occurring it's worthwhile otherwise you get numerical instabilities so I've just right clicked on default domain default and these are the only boundary conditions left and these are the ground and the wall I'm actually going to select a new boundary condition and I call it ground so I'm going to rotate this case here change the type to wall and select, hold control, select. This will be a no slip floor. This will be a no slip wall because friction will play a part. And then finally, the remaining boundary should be called house. So we have most of the settings done now. We need to create our transient inlet condition. So just selecting expression. And let's call it mean wind. So this will be a mean wind we're going to select. And let's say that's 15 and then meters per second. So ANSYS recognizes that unit there. So we know that that mean wind is going to be a velocity. So the next thing to do is create another expression. Just selecting expression up there. I'm going to call this 
over to you. And this is going to be the angle velocity of the wind. So I'm going to give that a value of 0 0.2. That's going to be radian per second. And then finally, just create a new expression. I'm going to call it wind velocity with a lowercase on the W. Okay, so we've created this expression called wind velocity. So the first thing we want to do is start by multiplying by mean wind. So mean wind star cos omega u star t. And I'm going to say plus mean wind as well. Might just give this a 0.4 times mean wind. So those units should cancel out there and it should become homogeneous. Brilliant. So going back to inlet, just making sure we have wind velocity there. If you're worried about the spelling, just go to command editor when you right click. And then come down here, double click, copy. So then when you put this into inlet, you can't get it wrong. So just select the four minutes per second we made up earlier. Just hit control V to paste and then select OK. OK, so we want to get some intermediate results. So we're going to double click on output control, hit transient results and hit new. And saying I want results every 0 0.1 seconds. Depending on your computational power, Obviously, the more you have, the more of the flow you'll see. But that also has the implication of giving you more data to hold, basically. If we go to default domain, double-clicking, select initialization, and just set all the initial velocities to be zero. And do the same for pressure. So if you're happy, just save this, shut it down, and go to Solver Manager. So once Solver Manager is open, just select Dual Precision and Run. So this simulation should start running now, but what we also want to do is monitor the forces on the house as the wind increases and decreases. So just go to the top here, select New Monitor, and then come all the way down to Force. Select the normal force because that's going to be significant here. Open up house, and the only forces that are of any significance are x and z. So just hit apply there, and right click and go to monitor properties. Just go up here to range settings, set manual linear scale. I'm just going to watch for a few more seconds to see what the forces fluctuate about. Because at the moment we've got an initial reaction to the flow and they're quite high, they're in the order of 10 to the 5 newtons. So if we just wait a moment, that should calm down. So if we maybe put it as 5 times 10 to the 4, both positive and negative. So minus 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. There you go, so our forces are in that region. Okay, I'm just going to let this case run and I'll be right back when the simulation is finished. Okay, so I've cut the simulation off slightly short. Um, there's no real need to keep it going. And what you can see in the red is the drag force and the lift force there in the green. And you can see that there's this cosine behavior and that is a result of our transient inlet condition. So I'm going to close that down, and once we shut down Solver Manager, I'm just going to open up CFD Post, and we're going to visualise this, so you can get a better idea of what's going on. 
All we've done so far is create a plane and then select velocity as the colour. So you can see that the inlet's on the left here, house is in the middle, and then everything to the right should be the wake. So if we select animation and opt for a time step animation and bring that all the way to the beginning, we can play and that should give us the development of the flow. Okay, so there's some interesting um, behavior going on there. You saw the velocity at the inlet increasing and then decreasing, increasing and then decreasing again. And you also saw the wake moving up, moving down, and then uh, detaching from this region of lower velocity here. So I hope that was interesting and helpful. If you have any comments, please leave them. If you like the video, please like it and subscribe. and if you want to get in touch, just email climatecfd at gmail.com and give any suggestions or comments.